Hi, I'm Paul Miguel, and in this video, I'm going to give you nine tips for bird photography that I think are really going to help you if you're just getting started. When it comes to choosing a camera and lens, you really want to think about how you are actually going to use it yourself. I've just picked out what I think are the most important things that you should concentrate on, the first of which is size and weight. The next is the focal length of the camera, the lens, does it get you close enough to the birds? The next one is the actual focusing speed. The focusing speed needs to be relatively fast. Make sure that you have a continuous frame rate and I would say you want a minimum of three to five frames per second. In terms of full frame or crop factor, um, this is something you could discuss for a long, long time. I would say for beginners, you're probably better to go with the option of a crop sensor. And lastly, of course, is cost. Take everything into account and how you're gonna use the camera, what subjects you're gonna be photographing and try and fit it as best you can into your budget. So what I've done is put a separate section at the end of this video just to go into more detail and I've actually picked out some specific cameras and lenses that I think are good for beginners on different budgets. So if you want to see that, watch the video right to the end. Tip number two is all about exposure. I would suggest you use aperture priority with automatic ISO. Now the aperture priority on your camera should be A or AV and the reason for using this, if you do it by selecting a fairly wide aperture then because it's letting in more light what it does is it helps to keep the shutter speed high and that's going to help to avoid camera shake. The automatic ISO part is really useful uh, for lower light so if the light levels drop then instead of the shutter speed just continuously getting slower which you don't want the ISO will go up uh, to combat that instead and it will help to keep the shutter speed high. Uh, there are other options, manual and shutter priority you can try, but there's different reasons why I don't think they're as good. So if you're a beginner, I would definitely say give that a try at first. That's aperture priority with automatic ISO. Number three is to use exposure compensation. And I would say if you're a beginner, this is probably one of the most useful things you can learn in terms of exposure. So with the beauty of digital, we can take the picture, we can look on the back and we can see if it looks okay. Uh, sometimes it might come out looking too bright or too dark that's where the exposure compensation comes in. So you should have a plus minus button hopefully somewhere on your camera and all you do is press that down and then use a wheel or a dial to adjust it. So if your picture's too dark or too bright you can then adjust that, take the picture again and it should look perfect. So um, a good example of when to use this is often photographing against blank skies. The camera underexposes. So what you need to do is overexpose. You use your exposure compensation and add a bit of extra plus exposure. Uh, another common example is photographing white birds where they just come out too white and too bright because they reflect so much light. In that situation, what you want to do is actually reduce the exposure with the exposure compensation dial and then take the picture again. So get in the habit of that, check in your exposure and if necessary, use the exposure compensation. Uh, tip number four is focus area. So you're likely to have some degree of control as to how big an area you can actually focus with through the viewfinder. So it may be called uh, zone area or simply just focus points. And whilst a big area can be useful for photographing, say, birds in flight against the blue sky, for example, I would advise that you actually close it down and use fewer focus points, a smaller area for most of your bird photography. So that leads me very nicely on to tip number five, which is to get the bird higher up in the frame. Uh, what do I mean by this? Well, if you are using a center focus point and you just focus on the bird's head, which you should do, and take the picture, then very commonly you're gonna end up with the head in the center, but the rest of the body of the bird is gonna be lower down and the tail is gonna be very close to the bottom, or it might even end up being chopped out of the bottom of the frame. So a really easy way to fix this is to kind of lock the focus and recompose. So if you're using back button focus, for example, uh, you would focus with your center focus point on the bird's head, using your thumb to focus, then take your thumb off the focus focus button, recompose, point the camera slightly down so the bird goes higher up in the frame and then take your picture. The 
The other alternative is that you can compose the picture exactly as you want and then actually choose the focus point that is closest to the bird's head and do it that way. If you're finding this information useful, then please do subscribe for future tutorials on my channel. Tip number six is to make sure you've got your correct autofocus setting when you're photographing birds in flight or indeed any action. So if you're tracking your bird in flight, you want to make sure that you've got the continuous autofocus setting. This is likely to be AFC on your camera on Canon. It's called Servo. And then what that will do is to track the bird as it continuously moves and keep it in focus. And if you're using the shutter button, then you want to keep your finger half pressed as you follow the bird the entire time and then press further down to start firing. Uh, if you're using back button focus, then you wanna keep the back button entirely depressed whilst you're tracking the bird in flight, and then your finger is gonna fire the shutter separately. Tip number seven is to watch your background. So think about where you're pointing the camera when you're photographing the bird. Can you move yourself in any way to get a better position to give yourself a clearer background? You wanna try and avoid really messy looking backgrounds and also you wanna avoid pointing towards white skies as much as possible. So have a think if even just slightly moving to the left, slightly to the right, just a few feet can make a real difference to where you're pointing and can give you a much clearer, smoother and maybe even more colorful background background. Tip number eight is to get to the same level as the subject. So if you've got a bird on the ground or particularly ducks on water, then you wanna try and get down as much as possible to their level and photograph them from there. Um, it just, it's just more engaging. I think the pictures are more engaging when you get to the same level, they are gonna look better. And also, cause you are lower down, it makes the background further away, which makes the background more out of focus and that tends to improve the images as well. So as much as possible, try and get to eye level with the bird. And tip number nine is to learn some bird behavior. So even if you're a beginner in bird photography, the more you know about the bird, the better your pictures are gonna be in the end. So have a think about the bird that you're trying to photograph. Uh, maybe, you know, what does it eat? Maybe it eats apples, for example. What time of day is it most active? Where does it tend to perch? What time of year does it make itself more obvious? Lots of birds displaying in the spring, that can be a good time. The more you learn about the bird and its behavior, not only the more you know, but the more you can predict what it's gonna do next, that's what's gonna get you the best pictures. So if you really wanna improve your photography, the more you can learn about individual bird behavior, the better. Uh, tip number one was how to choose equipment. In this section, I'm just actually gonna pick out a few cameras that I think would be suitable for beginners in bird photography. My subscribers were amazing, so thank you to everybody who replied. I got so many replies um, for, with my question as to what cameras to recommend. So I got loads and loads of examples. When it comes to choosing a camera and lens, you really wanna think about how you are actually gonna use it yourself. So are you, going to be more likely to be staying in one place for long periods of time or are you more likely to be walking around with the camera? Um, are you more likely to be photographing small birds or are you going to spend more time photographing large birds? All these things will make a difference to the equipment. Uh, I'm going to have to refer to my notes because I won't remember all these cameras so I have to keep looking at it I'm afraid. Um, first of all is Canon. So I would say for beginners in bird photography with Canon I would possibly go with something like a, a Canon 80D or a 7D Mark II and they are sort of in the mid-range uh, budget. Um, a much cheaper would be something like a 550D which is definitely uh, a budget option. More basic but still worth looking at. And then in terms of lenses, the lenses I would look at would be Canon 300mm f4 and 400mm f5.6 and then the other alternative is you could use a Sigma or a Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter. So for Canon, I would look at those possible options. Um, Nikon was probably one of the easiest. The D500 came up time and time again, and I've heard that one myself. Nikon D500, which is mid-range budget, or uh, Nikon D, D7500, which is much cheaper, more inexpensive. And for lenses, the main lens that comes up again and again is the Nikon 200mm to 500mm zoom lens. And I've seen reviews on that. Uh, Tom Mason does a fantastic review. I'll try and put a link to that 
uh, review he did, so it's very, very good. Well, definitely a fantastic lens for Nikon if you're looking for Nikon lenses. Again, you could use the Sigma or Tamron with the Nikon body as well. Um, in terms of mirrorless cameras, I've got the Panasonic G9, possibly with a Leica 100 to 400 mil. So have a look at that. Uh, the Sony A6400 with a 70 to 350 millimeter lens. So thank you to the people who recommended that. Uh, Olympus, yes, Espen Helland has a fantastic channel. If you want to see him shooting with Olympus, go and have a look at Espen's wildlife photography channel. The OMD EM, this is how much I know these cameras, right? The OMD EM1 Mark II. That's one of the cameras that I think would be suitable for a beginner with a Zuiko 300mm f4 lens. The only thing is, that is pretty expensive kit. That's an expensive lens. Um, but the Olympus EM1, worth looking at and much lighter. And then you've got bridge cameras. So at the bottom, much, much cheaper if you're on a, a smaller budget. A couple of bridge cameras that some subscribers thought were pretty good for bird photography. You've got the Lumix and a FZ330 and a Lumix FZ82 and also a Nikon Coolpix 990. So these two are bridge cameras, which um, the, the quality, I don't think it's going to be as good. Uh, the flexibility, um, accessing controls won't be as easy as it is on the other cameras. Um, but they are definitely a cheaper option and no doubt you can take some good bird, bird photos with those cameras. Think about what you're going to do with the camera. Don't just buy a camera because someone tells you to. Think about what you're going to do with it, what type of bird photography you're going to be doing. Find the camera that suits you, size and weight, quality and cost. If you'd like to see another tutorial on bird photography, then if you click on this video here, this one's going to tell you everything you need to know about photographing birds in flight. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.